Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Rodeo Time, the podcast. Um, we hope that this is um, just an energy drink for your ears. And um, because it's like that, because we got some new equipment, and hopefully this experience will sound better for you than it has in the past. We've got with us today Blythe Eep, Donnie Ray Daytona, Katrin Coward, and, uh, of course, Dale Brisby. All this has been brought to you by Rodeo Time. DaleBrisby.com. Check it out. We've got new shirts. We've got new hoodies. We've got new caps. So go visit DaleBrisby.com. Otherwise, you ain't no cowboy. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, you got that new JB cap on. So Ooh. we got some signed JB caps coming to DaleBrisby.com. If you want to know when those drop, you got to text me. Text me the word JB poster to 940-353-0890. Now on to the podcast. Yes, welcome ladies and gentlemen to Rodeo Time, the podcast. We're just waiting on Blythe Eep, who is standing awkwardly behind all the cameras, watching us as she holds her. She doesn't want to join the She's also already got a chair over here, so everything's just waiting on Blythe. Um, Yeah, podcast number 77, I think. Um, it's been, uh, it's been a good run and I feel like it's as a new era. We've come a long way. We've come a long ways and the new era is the, the, the sound. Yeah. It's a new sound. It is a new sound. It's a new sound. <laughs> <It sounds. laughs> With podcast number 77, uh, Dale has finally, um, put some, some, some money down on a new, uh, mixer board. I don't even know what they're called. Yeah. That's know. a mixer. But it's awesome. um, yeah, I think what this will help us avoid is like whenever we laugh and it gets really loud mm-hmm. and then people, you know, they got to turn it up because we're quiet mm-hmm. at times. But then we laugh really loud. There's like a good limiter on th- these things have limiters. Like I said, right. On, That's so. yeah. So I was like daydreaming of a of a technology on podcast equipment that when like someone laughs loud, it would like turn the volume down for you. And apparently it already existed. Yeah. Kind of like. Or did you like just think of it into existence? Kind of like whenever like I thought of like a horse and I just drew a horse with a spike on its head. (laughs) Before I even knew what uh, a a unicorn was. Yeah. Could barely talk. Four years old. Five years old. Five. Yeah. Do you have to manually adjust the settings like the word (coughs) as we talk or? No. No. It's pretty much just set them all. Like so we should probably turn hers up, yeah, I or know. move closer to the mic. Yeah. There you I feel go. Feel like I'm kissing it. It's gonna yeah. feel that way. Don't lick it. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> what is this? Should this. Name it. Well, Donnie's already licked him. So. Uh, yeah, I go Put to Jerry's. Put that in your lap, please. Morning. We don't Can mind this her? being a Jerry's commercial, but this isn't a commercial. Now it is because I'm talking speak. about it. Why don't you? Why don't you? Um, since you edit the podcast, why don't you uh, bleep out what I said and then blur out that can? <laughs> now everybody's gonna think that it's a. Something. Yeah. Ooh. Anyways, this is Blythe Eep, everyone. She is um, she is the most recent. Is that connected to yeah. Bluetooth? Ain't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Blythe Eep is the most recent intern, and she hails from Nebraska, and she is um, she's on the media team, mm-hmm. and she's um, been editing podcasts and ads. This one right here. Yep. Middle of a cornfield. That's where I came from. Yeah. You bet. Is that <laughs> <I'm> laughing? <laughs> this is the wrong track. I meant to play this one. Oh. No. <laughs> a lot better. <laughs> oh, still learning what the buttons do. Uh, we've got Blythe Eep from Nebraska. Yeah. No, I was waiting no, on he the was applause. The other oh. one. Oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> Corn and goat farmer. Um, <clears throat> She's the only intern who didn't. Submit a video first. <laughs> Tell us how you got the how you got the job. Yeah, so um, I was driving back eight hours from working at a retreat, and I just I saw your um, story on Instagram, and I was like, oh, they're gonna be in Nebraska. I'm like an hour away from where you're gonna be, so I was like, oh, let's 
it's, he said send it in a video, but also like I want to meet him in person. So I went home. I got home at like six o'clock. I don't that remember night. saying I wanted to meet you in person. Oh yeah, no, no. But I was like, oh, she oh, said you she wanted, wanted to meet, to meet you in person. person. Yeah, gotcha. Because she so could put a face to the video. Yeah, of course. I just you know it's all consp- conspiracy. I wanted to make sure this thing was legit. If you're real, or not. gotcha. You're real. <laughs> it turns I'm out. here. <laughs> no, it's all green screened. But um, so I went back, got back at six, and then made the video, edited it by like seven thirty. Sent it to you. It took forever to send to you. I don't think it sent to you till like the next day. Uh-huh. <laughs> then I went back because you like, live in Nebraska. Yeah, in the middle of a cornfield. So right. Reception <laughs> is rough sometimes, but um, yeah. So made it in the goat pen. Uh, the goats were happy to see me, and then I just screwed it on and left. So and I met you. You're real. Yeah. No, it was a good. It was a good conversation, and you 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 had a firm handshake. You looked me in the eye, and you were. Um, I realized you were normal, and you weren't a green screen. <laughs> so that was good that I got to do that. But then, um, yeah, you just convinced me that I needed you to work for me. I actually went with my mom. <laughs> oh, she just didn't come in. She came in. She was like taking videos from like far away. Oh really? Oh yeah. It wow. was like it was like paparazzi like she was well, there. <laughs> why why was she videoing? Just so you could commemorate the experience? You know, I don't I don't know. Or just cuz she's a mom and they video her. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be just a mom. <laughs> why didn't she come up with you? Uh because oh, man, have my mom there with me for the first like time meeting you? I mean, you just finding out now that my mom went with me. <laughs> right. <laughs> Love my mom, but uh yeah, I was circling that place for, like, a good hour, like, just building up the courage to, like... Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Well, I could tell you were nervous. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I could tell you were nervous, but I... Um, still crispy. But, I, well, thank you. But I... Uh, <coughs> but you were you were still... You were still impressive, so... Oh, that's um, good. Yeah. And then we... I really didn't need an intern when you came on. Oh, really? You probably came... <coughs> we... I'll let you come based on the <laughs> meeting you solely. Yeah. I didn't, we didn't need an intern at that time. So I had just taken on Kevin, Kevin. And I told Kevin when he came, the only reason we took on Kevin, what was, what did we, we were doing something. Maybe we were talking about building the fence or something. But I don't remember. Uh, Willie <laughs> moved into a container <laughs> and it opened up the bunkhouse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, that's right. Gabe and Noemi moved into a house. Willie moved into a container. Most of the time, we take on an intern based on housing. Mm-hmm. Winnebago so. isn't just overflowing with, <laughs> with inventory as far as real estate mm-hmm. is concerned. So when a house comes open, that's when we take on a, an intern. So you... <clears throat> anyway, back to Kevin. So we were like, I was like, Kevin... Kevin sent a video about the time that the bunkhouse came open. I was like, Kevin, we'd love to have you. But we don't necessarily need a lot of extra hands right now. Mm -hmm. However, we have a spot for you to live. And um, I said, so pay will be a little slimmer than normal, you know. And then, uh, and then, like two weeks later, (laughs) maybe a week later, I met you. Yeah. (laughs) And then I was like, I could live out of my car. Right. And you so and you said all the right things, and I was like, all right, (laughs) let's make it happen. You know, housing came available, and then you know you also met the need of the uh the uh <clears throat> the media team you know so kevin was helping in the warehouse and you helped with media so that was cool yeah i know it's it's fun yeah, yeah. It's- so i didn't realize i mean I, I thought you were nervous but i didn't realize you were that nervous so oh yeah i think i yeah i think i like docile down but I remember when I first met you, I was like, Dale Brisby. And you were like, hi, <laughs> I don't yeah. know you. I was like, but I know you. Yeah. And well, well then, <laughs> um, so then like a week later, it was your birthday. Yes. And I was texting you happy birthday because that's normally what I do with yeah. my, and you didn't believe it was me. No, I was like, this is a prank. I didn't. I can't remember what job. you said. <laughs> that's funny. What did you say? You said I something, like, but I was like, no, it's me. And and then that same day, I was like, you want to come? Because you turned 21. <laughs> yeah. You had to be 21 to be an intern. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because I, so. I, I remember getting the text and, like, not responding. Because I was like, it's probably just, like, a mess. Like, he just sends it to everybody on their birthday. Like, he doesn't have to do anything on his phone. But it was actually you. I think you texted. You were like, 
is this is it really your birthday i was like oh man <laughs> yes sir <laughs> yeah it is yeah so wait you were like hey you want to come be an intern like on her birthday yeah happy birthday to you i didn't know that yeah that's cool it was fun yeah so she got a <clears throat> invitation to radiator ranch on her birthday Best and she, ever. she turned 21 so Baller. because after she left i kind of that i don't know if i asked you how old you were whenever you were in person but um i think i i mean being a week out i would i was gonna make it i mean you turn 21 in a week, you know, like that was, all right. By the time you get here, you'll be 21. But I just, you know, it just happened to also be your birthday whenever I like actually made the decision. So anyways, um, yeah. So what do you think of Winnebago so far? I like it. Um, the John John is my favorite bull. Really? He's cute. <coughs> he is the only bull that's ever like tried to like get me. It's because it's partially my fault. I was the other day I was like, I was feeding them. And he was on the outside of the fence. And so I climbed the fence and I was like, I was going down and I like, <laughs> I put the feed bucket like on his head. And then he, he, yeah. He, he was kind so of you're, you're also, you've also got like a, a background, like you're kind of a plumber. Uh, because like we had some plumbing issues this morning that you solved because you called me and you were like, hey, oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the yeah. water's not working on this side of the house. I called Dale, I was like, Hey, yeah. Uh, I well, one of the hoses was working, and so I was like, "Is he?" He, he was like, "The water might be out for everybody," but no, it was. It was. I. I don't even know what happened. <laughs> I guess I didn't turn kinked. it on. <laughs> I was gonna be my guest, but I didn't want to like say it in case you know. Uh, I don't know what was wrong. With yeah. It. <laughs> the hose was oh man! Oh, it was funny. <laughs> yeah yeah she was how like long? Cause she called me back this she called me and she was like hey i don't know what's wrong but and then she <laughs> called me back like five or six minutes later no nah, you know I was at a, I was, uh, just don't worry about it yeah. like, and i was like, like hey come. i didn't understand anything you just said <laughs> don't worry about the water wheel just went and then i'll just you know go be there shortly <laughs> I, was like, I still did not click she was hung up <laughs> she walked in i was like Hose was kinked, wasn't it? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> it's, like, it's not coming out. Yeah. Imagine. So what is a major difference um, in your just kind of, I know that the, the major difference between the ranch in Winnebago and what you had going on in Nebraska is the fact that, you know, you guys farmed. Yeah. But um, so yeah. just day-to-day lifestyle as far as like on this ranch compared to on the farm. On the farm. So the ranch is like, it's, it's bigger. My dad, um, it's kind of funny. I quit working for my dad to move to work for a ranch in Texas. But <laughs> so he's, he's funny. He made a fake intern video, like <laughs> just as a spoof, but it's, it's different. It's like a bigger scale. Also, we didn't have horses. That's kind of cool. It's like, yeah, you get to like get on a horse instead of, we just check pivots and stuff on four wheelers and right. So, and, uh, yeah. So harvest this time. Of year harvest is crazy for farmers. Yeah, I'm just harvesting constantly. You thought that I was just we were just goat farmers. Yes. <laughs> so skin. your TikTok has a lot of goats. Yeah. And TikTok. yeah, it's funny now. Like those <laughs> jokes are that you made on your TikTok are even funnier now <laughs> that I know. Like I thought that's all y'all did. I thought oh, you no. were a goat farmer. <laughs> and from Nebraska. Now that I know that you're y'all just farm farm and you just happen to have a few goats, like yeah. your TikToks like hit harder in my maybe I should have like. <laughs> done a little digger deep in because i was like this is funny but now that i know that you only have like a handful of goats it's even more funny yeah we have like around 20 goats yeah that's a lot of goats yeah. i was gonna say that seems like a lot you have I, that, a that's a lot of goats but no i just, i thought you had enough goats to like support a family Oh man! And like, I don't think anybody can have that many. Goats. Send kids to college and you know retire <laughs> like that. Oh. That kind of goats. Like I thought you were okay. like, like a goat person. <laughs> I didn't realize you because like my sister, who um, is also looking for an intern. I got to do an intern video with my sister. Um, that's what actually brought us to Winnebago. I was working for my brother-in-law. You know they run uh, wheat pasture cattle and cows. And they do a lot of uh, wheat harvesting. So if you're looking for an intern there, text me the word intern and we'll throw you in the loop and you'll be 
and she, you know, they still come over on buck outs and you could actually probably still like be a bull rider, yeah. just intern over there, mm -hmm. come ride bulls with us in the evenings. So that could work out. 940-353-0890. 940-353-0890. Text me the word intern, and uh, that will be another opportunity. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, so my sister and her kids, they got some goats, show goats. And I was like, you need to talk to Blythe. She could help with those goats. But <laughs> now, now it's like it's even funnier because it's just like you're like, you're just kind of like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we have We have show goats. They're Nigerian dwarf goats, which are like a dairy breed. I know your views on showing animals, but yeah. One time I was um, so showing my goats. This was in like middle school or high school, and my goat sat down in the ring, like laid down, and was not about to get up. So yeah. I like it was it was it was a humbling <laughs> moment. I was like I'm in front of all these sixty year old people that had spent ten years getting their goat there. So yeah, I, I'm not anti stock shows. The last podcast I got a little frustrated because. I guess I'm just very pro commercial steers because of those reasons. You can go back and look in that podcast. And it just frustrates me that like the commercial steer program is not like a bigger deal. Yeah. But that's nobody's fault other than people in commercial steers. That's you know, what I should... showed my junior and senior year was commercial steers. Did you really? <clears throat> and commercial heifers. So you didn't halter break them? Not, not the heifers, no. No, the steers. Oh, yeah. You halter broke them? Yeah. So it wouldn't be commercial steers. You might, we might I'm not. I'm just messing with you. Oh, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I did do commercial heifers, though. Um, so commercial steers is like a pin of, th it's like a feedlot thing, right. you know. And anyways, just real quick, I'm not going to go into it. But I do want to defend what I said last time. <laughs> you get graded on four different things, and only 25%, one of the four is the performance of the, the, the steers. So it's a pin of three in Houston, a pin of two in San Antonio. You don't halter break them. You feedlot them. You know, the uh, the second thing is a f is a record book. The third thing is a written test. The fourth thing is a speech. Speech in San Antonio, an oral interview with three judges in Houston. Mm -hmm. So it's like 75% of your total score comes from your personal knowledge and or your record book. And then 25% comes from the performance of the animal. Part of the thing in the record book is cost of gain. So if you like, <clears throat> and like break even price. So like if you spend an astronomical amount of money on your steers, which is unrealistic anyway, then you're you know you're going to get deducted points if you spend an astronomical amount of price uh, money on your feed you're going to get deducted points, so it behooves you to be efficient, mm -hmm. you know have a, you know just an efficient steer and an efficient feed and make money. So yeah. if you make money, if you're profitable, you know you 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 get more points, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. And in the stock show industry, I get a little <laughs> agitated just because it's like the opposite. They spend a bunch of money on a real expensive steer, spend a bunch of money on feed, and then a lot of times the person showing him isn't even the one that did the work, and it's it's and none of it's realistic. And so, but there's exceptions to the rule, like yourself. Well, you love goats. You 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 <laughs> you have an interest in like, you know, like there's nothing wrong with you showing goats. There's nothing wrong with Donnie showing a show steer. And then you halter break the steer and you go and you show it, you know. There's nothing wrong with I that. Didn't show steers, by the way. I was about to say, did you? No, no. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, there's nothing wrong with somebody just getting a pig and showing a pig. There's nothing wrong with that. I should have been more specific. What I get agitated at is, like, people that turn their noses up at commercial steers. Like, I'll be talking to some people and I'll tell them about commercial steers. And then it's like, it's like they just tune me out. And I'm just like, that's what frustrates me. Yeah. And when we're like the stepchild of the stock show industry. No offense, because Donnie, I know you're a redheaded stepchild, but you you can relate. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, no, uh, Radiator Ranch is it's pretty great. The warehouse is awesome. Um, there, you know, another thing about stock shows. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. Here we go. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm done. Another. What else about Winnebago? There should be a complaint box because the bathroom in the women's restroom. I've been walked in on. So it's a thing. You can y'all don't lock the Shut door. door. Uh, no, you Shut can it. lock the door. It still comes open. We need a new handle. We need a new locking system. Okay, well I'm when gonna I get walked on the soapbox <laughs> with life. <laughs> when I walked in it. on Neely. <laughs> when, the why door are you going wasn't to the women's restroom? Because it's closer to my office and I just needed it's to use the sink. Three steps. 
I to just the mince. needed to use yeah, the sink. Yeah, but if you're gonna use the sink to like wash dishes or something, or you can't go into the mints. No, to what? It's, it's, it's just closer. It's, yeah. Does it work? <laughs> it's nicer. Of course well, it's hey, nicer. believe me, I learned my lesson. I don't anymore. Yeah. But the point is, is like the door was even open and cracked. Yeah. You know, because you got to like put your shoulder. Like, yeah. If I see the light you got to put your shoulder. In, exactly. That's the only way we can like kind of keep it closed. Is okay. Like, well, just if you're going to tell me there. that it's just three more steps, I can tell you it's just your shoulder. Got Get her. us a new Got lock, her. lock, please. Got her. Thanks. Got her. Should be a sign. Thanks. <coughs> also, the trash can. <laughs> Thank you, Donnie. <laughs> How about you guys sign a petition? Get a petition. If you get more, if enough signatures, then we'll do something. The people that come in. Okay, I'll get it? all the no. women's signatures. <laughs> no. Dang. We'll we'll take it to a vote. We're gonna pick. We're gonna go to the budget. We're gonna pick two things. You guys get to choose. Start board. A new printer <laughs> or office chairs. New printer. Office we do need a new chairs. printer. <laughs> that and printer office chairs. New. I was gonna say that printer's. I know it's a, it's it's a joke, you know, like the office. You yeah. Know, oh yeah. Okay. Okay. But right. I thought right. you were being serious. Like, me too. I got the if joke. If Michael gets a new chair, yeah. Pam gets her chair. If Pam gets a new chair, then I get Pam's chair, and then I'll have two chairs. One to go. Only one to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's an office quote. Have you seen the office? I haven't. Gosh as much darn it, Blythe. Yikes. Gosh I darn should. it. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> Are you invited to the table anymore? <laughs> you know who else hasn't seen The Office? It's Mick. Why do you keep calling him that? <laughs> What's his name? I, I was going to say Rick. I'm Rick. Rick. It's her boyfriend. Nick. We need to talk about this. Also, he has seen The Office. You have a two boyfriend? Full You've been Ooh. cheating on Donnie <laughs> <laughs> when he specifically <laughs> asked you not to? How serious is it? How serious is it? You and you and Rick. I, I mean, that's, I don't know. It's, it's serious <laughs> enough. I know he's like visiting you, so it's that serious. Yeah. I'm just wondering if we need to stop telling people to send you pickup lines in the DMs. Probably. They've <laughs> long stopped doing that. Oh, have they? Yeah. They'll I want them to do it. They've started doing it to Jordan now, and I want them to start doing it to Blythe. Oh. So oh, okay. they'll have good pickup lines to Blythe or Jordan. What's your them. Insta? It's Blythe Eep. Yeah. B L Y T H E Yes. E P P. Yep. Two E's, two P's. Yep. So you send your name. best pickup lines e, to Blythe Eep, the Goat Rancher. Yes, sir. I apologize in advance for <coughs> any um unsolicited, <laughs> not great ones that you get that are well, they're all solicited. They're we all just solicited, them but they're <laughs> inappropriate, I should say. Oh, yeah, yeah don't like, be inappropriate. Yeah, yeah, that's not cool. That's not we don't, cool. We don't want that. That wasn't very fun for me, that part. So, <laughs> um, <coughs> On TikTok, I have that in my bios. What's that? What? Put your best pickup line in the comment section. Oh. <laughs> There's some fun ones, but... You, you can't DM people on uh, TikTok if, you don't, if they don't follow you, right? I don't know. I can't do Picture. on TikTok. Yeah. I send you videos. I don't even yeah, know if you get them. It's, it says, like... This per- person can't <coughs> receive messages. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Recently, I got, I put up a video, how to get started ranching. Taken down due to multiple, to, to com- going against community guidelines. That video, then? Uh, yes. And I was like, okay, let me submit an appeal because I'm literally just telling someone how to get started in this magnificent trade that feeds the people that watch this app. And, uh, you know, of course, it gets restored. Mm-hmm. But I still, they're just like, well, you still got to, you know, it still went against for a time, so you still can't post for another week. It's like, it just makes no sense. Yeah. It's like going to jail for theft, and you're like, hey, I didn't steal anything. Oh, yeah, you're right. You didn't. Why don't you stay in there another week? Just, <laughs> just, <go. laughs> yeah. just That's literally what's going on. Like TikTok, it's like they need to change the name of TikTok to Snowflake. Ooh. Ooh. Salty. Dude, that's me right now. Like I mean, like I can't I can't fart on TikTok and not get yeah, it's taken, down. taken down for yeah. and they, it they'll is, call it hate that's speech. Like, mm, it anything on social media right now. <laughs> like I posted that video of that horse flipping over and like nothing never really came of that. That's pretty bad. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's people that report me or just like they just like now it's just TikTok in general. I think it's just TikTok. I don't understand. Well, it's also Instagram. The other day, oh, yeah. Instagram wouldn't let me go live. I thought, because I, usually anything gets taken down on TikTok, Instagram will let go up. But now they won't let me go live because stuff has 
keeps it said because you keep having stuff taken down. And I, the only thing I can think of is I keep getting this notification of this video that we posted in 2016. It was just cool B-roll of Las Vegas, and it was me walking around, shaking hands with a few people, and it was a promo for my booth in Las Vegas at the NFR in 2016, five years ago. And I'll repeatedly get an even an email, hey, your video hasn't been restored yet. And I'm just like, okay, I don't give a sh about that video <laughs> from five years ago. I don't even know why you're sending me. And then the other day I got an email. It's like, hey, we restored your video. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm sure everyone was wondering about the video I posted five years ago. That's the only thing in, in those five years that's been, to my knowledge, you know, taken down on Instagram. Yeah, well, you can't go live right now, bro. You just, we just, we don't know about you, you know. <laughs> You posted uh, that that video in 2016 about walking around in Vegas, and there's not even any words in it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, now freaking Instagram it's makes weird. me want to sell like my Facebook stock. So have you called Mark? <clears throat> That's well, I texted him. Yeah. Yeah, makes me want to sell it. And Zucks is like that sometimes, isn't he? Yeah. Sometimes I think he's a redheaded stepchild. Sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I call him. Right. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. yeah. Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know I got it. Dial? You can call him right now. People Golly, I was watching a, I, I was watching a, a Gary Vee <laughs> live thing Doing the other day, and they were talking about buying his books on Amazon, and uh, somebody was saying Amazon's down, and he was like, hold on, guys, and he put it on mute, and he went to start texting. I was like, if this some is texting Jeff Bezos, he was like, Sorry, guys, I'm texting Jeff. And, like, dead serious. And I was like, this son of a gun knows Jeff Bezos. And he got off, and he's like, we should have it fixed in the next 10 minutes. No, nah, I'm just playing with y'all. <laughs> he, never, he never jokes like that. Yeah. I was like, this son of a gun got me. He got me good. I think I told one of you one told y all was standing next to me. Donnie. I was like, this son of a gun knows Jeff Bezos. Anyway, whatever. Um, yeah, so uh, TikTok, <clears throat> as mad as I am at TikTok, what um that's that's what you got you got TikTok ish. Yeah, I got TikTok for a minute and then I I quit it for a hot minute. Why have you quit it? Uh because I wasn't in Nebraska anymore. And I it wasn't <laughs> my stuff, it's your stuff. So How you mean? Well, well okay. That's funny that you said that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear a story or something? Oh no. <laughs> Should I have? Well, Wait, it's the first time whenever uh, Wes. Yeah, I knew that's what the story you were. Saying. <laughs> yep. Story time. I was like, yep. Well, I, I, the first time, so it was like Randy and Leroy were the only ones making videos for me, and I was yeah. like, "Dude, we got so much stuff. We filmed so much stuff. We'll film for hours, uh -huh. and then Randy and Leroy will make a four minute, five minute something out of it, yeah. and this just all this leftover stuff. I was uh -huh. like, "Dude, Donnie and and uh, Wes can," but it was kind of like a new thing. They were interns. I mean, they yeah. were getting paid, but it's like, and I wasn't going to ask them to go buy all the stuff. Yeah. I was like, we'll use my cameras and I'll just buy y'all computers, hard drives, you know, all this stuff. And so uh -huh. got Wes and, uh, and then Randy taught him, Leroy taught him. I think y'all filmed and edited each one video for me. And, uh, Donnie knows some tricks. <laughs> and then, and, and then Wes just for some reason just took it upon himself to take off making, uh, but it was like, those computers, TikToks or yeah, or for himself. TikToks. <laughs> yeah, so he kept walking around at work, and he was like, "Man, check out this TikTok. It's going viral on my on my TikTok." <laughs> He's like showing everybody. I was like, "Wes, this computer costs like twenty five hundred dollars. <laughs> Plus, you're getting paid. It's three o'clock on a Tuesday. Can you make me something <laughs> that will go viral? That is what's paying for all this. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah." Yeah, you got a good point there, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. I haven't heard about that, but, but I'm glad I know now. Yeah. But you're free to make and post things. I want you to grow your brand. So yeah. I don't really have a brand. But you got oh, the, yeah, you do. Everyone it's has a brand. Yeah, you got oh, the Bly the okay. Eat brand. Yeah. Actually our our uh, dairy goat farm. So we have Cedar Woods Farms, which is our like corn farm. <laughs> and then we actually have like a name for our dairy farm and it's milking it. Milking it. Gotcha. Yep. Do y'all have an Instagram? I actually do. Dang. Okay. <laughs> I like it. Milking it. So you're, you're, Not updated. you're farmers, you're dairy farmers, and you're, so you're everything but actual goat ranchers. 
correct. Gotcha. Yeah. <coughs> what are, what, we don't what, sleep with our goats. You like went to school where? Shows and they sleep. They bring their bed. And they sleep in the pen with their goats. Why? Uh, so that nobody touches their goats. Oh. Because they're very protective. Yeah. Does that people, happen a people lot? Do this. People touch goats? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> is that a thing at stock shows? I, I guess people are worried about it. I was going to barn mess with them goats. <laughs> yeah, other people's shows. No, people get serious about this. All the papers and stuff. So my old man was an ag teacher. I showed <laughs> every year. That's another reason why your boy has like is salty about certain things. Like I was getting up at two in the morning, not only to take care of my pigs, lambs. Show steers, commercial steers, but other people's. What you know, you go like, to bed? It, dude, stock show season is crazy, yeah, especially is. when you're the ag teacher or the ag teacher's kid. Yeah. You don't go to bed. Mm. So anyways, <clears throat> and we go to all the major shows. But yeah, they're, the one year, um, it was either me or Leroy, but it was like one and the same. We had a bad to the bone pig and... Um, we're in San Antonio, and, like, you can't have, like, a sh- certain type of, like, show sheen on your pig when you show. But, <clears throat> and then getting them to weigh in uh-huh. is, like, the thing. You know, you want them to be a certain weight. Uh-huh. And when they go across the scale, like, and it matters, like, what they drank that day. It matters, oh. like, if they have sawdust on their back. Like, it, it all that matters, you know, uh-huh. especially if the scales are a little different. You want to yeah. have a little, and like moments before we were supposed to show, some some someone sprayed like this show sheen on our pig, and uh, someone touched your pig. Someone touched our pig. We should have slept with that <laughs> some buck. And uh, so my my dad walks up and just all over the butt of this pig, you know, because kids run around everywhere. I'm sure it was just somebody was just like messing yeah. around and. Uh, there's just this show sheen, and so he has to wash this pig, and uh, and he didn't make weight. Yeah, uh. so because it happened literally minutes before he goes in the Ooh. ring, and it kind of just threw everything off. And didn't goes, they weight. weigh it, and then like you don't go into the ring to show. You literally go down this other alley. The judge is like, "Ah, oh, that's a nice pig." Reject. The judge says, I, "It had to be my brother," because I don't. I just remember helping my dad wash. I think it was my brother's pig. But the judge's like, "Man, that's a nice pig." Oh, you know, which he might have just scale? been saying that, you know, do what? There's a scale that. Yeah, there's like literally a scale. Time. Yeah, you got to like, you got to make, make weight and then you go into the ring. Huh. Yeah. Anyway, so like, I guess I could see that with goats. People don't want stuff like that to happen. Well, they, uh, they, they make sure. So dwarf goats, like they don't want to get too small, but like too big. So I have dwarf goats, Nigerian dwarf goats. So it's like they have a little scale. What's the purpose of thing. a dwarf goat? Yeah, sure I was going to ask the enough. same thing. Uh, you can have a lot of them, so it's very so it's the most. I'm gonna get all goat showy on you. Um, there's a it's the most like competitive dairy goat show like breed because oh so they're dairy goats yeah gotcha people can have a lot of them and they can breed them really fast because they're they don't have a season that they like. What's their gestation? Uh, five months. So nice. We're breeding right now, so and then they <laughs> have to yeah so and they're like small so they're. People can just have them, like... Have you ever wanted to do anything in rodeo? I mean... Because you didn't even really come here to learn about ranching. Right? Yeah. No, I, I came here to get... So, I'm in or college all the right above. Now. All the above. You want all the above. Because I, I don't know a lot about it, but I know a lot about farming, corn Kay. farming, corn cobs, and soybeans. We do that, too. And... But I've always been interested. It wasn't a Dale Brisby... Uh, <sighs> who is you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so give me a list of like top things you want to learn while you're here uh so basically filming and editing just yep. that sort of thing and then also i'm very interested in how you grew your brand like because i remember seeing you when i was a kid and then like now you have all these cool shirts that's and crazy does that make you feel old? No. <laughs> that made me feel old. That's crazy, though. Uh-huh. Because uh, uh, Jared Outlaw said the same thing. Like, he was making... He's got some people that watch his videos that weren't alive when he made his first one. Cool. That's just yeah. a crazy thought. Yeah, I remember him <laughs> So, um... You've been making videos of... Eight, eight years. Yeah. Yeah. 
Which, I mean, that would put you at 13 years old. Yeah. So, but that, I mean. That's still kind of a kid. Man, mm-hmm. one more year and you could have been not even a teenager. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're you're de- you're definitely a kid by the laws, in the law's eyes. You could still mess up and not go to prison. That's so, good. um I didn't. Yeah, so you want to learn how I grew the brand. Yeah. Um, Filming, editing, learn how to grow the brand. Then what? Also know about rodeoing. Rowing. Ro- rowing? Not rowing. Rodeoing. Like that. It's just always interested me. So just learn about like rodeo culture and yeah. events and stuff like that. Yeah. Gotcha. And that's it? That's that's pretty much it. Cool. People, uh, my family joked that I was I was running away and joining the circus. That's kind of what you're yeah. doing. Yeah. <laughs> One thousand that's percent. What that's doing. what you did. Especially had 2020 not happened and slowing us down. <laughs> Because we used to, I mean, like, we were we were constantly going to another booth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, now it's just, like, five big ones. Yeah. And none of them happen in the summer. Uh-huh. <coughs> well, I take that back. A couple of them do. But, um, you know, it's just not as many. Mm-hmm. We used to go to a lot of booths. And um, and now it's just fewer. So, mm-hmm. um, it definitely felt like the circus. So. It's um, fun, though. I like the circus. This is what, what it is. What have you learned or what have you been surprised by as far as like how we've grown the brand? Like what have you learned about me growing the brand since you've been here that maybe you didn't expect? It was, well, I thought you did a lot, but just. (laughs) Turns out it's not. (laughs) (laughs) No, No, you do more than I expected Um, you do because, and you, yeah, you still do more so. You do you do a lot, and then also you teach us how to do stuff that we want to learn, and that too. So that's honestly the most shocking part. The most oh. shocking part is that he takes time to teach. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, actually, because you, because I remember for like projects in school, editing videos and then posting them, and like coming up with like thumbnails and like captions and like exciting things and, and copyright all that calm law stuff too. So just to juggle all that. Plus like having interns that, you know, I mean, I might run off tomorrow. Just kidding. I won't, I won't, I won't do that. But yeah. So what about, <clears throat> so that, that's kind of like the scheduling part of it. So that, so as far as like, it sounds like you're saying there's a lot more going on than what you expected. Yeah. Am I hearing you right? Uh huh. So, is there anything in that schedule that I do to grow the brand that surprised you? Yeah, there's a lot more people behind it. Was is there anything that like you you didn't expect? Maybe you see whether it's um, the number of platforms we do, or how we break down the content on each one, or Facebook ads, or maybe there's something you thought we would we were doing more of that we're not doing. So I don't know. I don't know. There's not a right or wrong answer. I'm just curious for someone. Most people come here to learn, you know, the first thing they want to learn is ranching or rodeo. Mm -hmm. And so it's been neat that you came to learn about this other stuff. I'm just curious because one person about ranching, they might come in and say, well, we definitely don't do, you know, you don't do, um, you, you do way more warehouse work than you do ranching or something like that. They may have, most people aren't going to be surprised by that because we communicate that, you know, before mm-hmm. they get here. But like, is there anything like that that is unique to what you thought it would be? Like your expectations? Man. There may not Maybe be. Maybe when I first got here, but I just forgot about it. Gotcha. It's yeah. Months, so. It's kind of a specific question. So yeah. I, uh, <clears throat> I just, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what a guy should be or shouldn't be doing. I just feel like putting out as many videos as we can that are entertaining is yeah. kind of like this the the end all be all for us. Like that's just what got us where we are. So that's what I'm kind of rinsing and repeating. So everything we do on a day to day is just another version of how to how to put those videos out. For instance, this right here. You know, it's a podcast. We enjoy doing them. We enjoy. It seems like more people than what I thought enjoy listening to them, and so we just keep doing them. And and so it, it seems to advance the brand. Same thing with the way we put out Snapchats and TikToks and Instagram and YouTube and and whatnot. It's funny, yeah. I used to be like, oh TikTok. Like some people like really do not like TikTok, and some people are like really for TikTok. I used to be like one of those, oh TikTok. <laughs> then yeah. I got a TikTok, and then I'm 
Now you're a TikToker. <laughs> or you turned it back off. I'm, I, uh, oh man, I don't know. I'm, I'm in the middle. <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> I ran into some TikTokers at um, Tulsa Welding School. We did uh, another competition uh-huh. every year they do. And it's Tulsa Welding School's Top Welder. And it's usually three or four episodes, and there'll be four or, four or so teams that compete. And so we filmed that at the beginning of the month. Uh-huh. And uh, <coughs> it was four teams. Each one had an instructor and a TikTok influencer. So No way. Girl. Huh. Yeah, so it would be an instructor from Tulsa Welding School, and their partner was a TikTok influencer, female welder. Uh-huh. So, like, they all welded. They all knew how to weld. And they all had TikToks that were built around welding. Yeah. So that was really interesting. But none of them did anything else besides TikTok. And that was my advice to them. I, you know, we ha- we ate lunch together. I was like, uh-huh. y'all got to do something else. Yeah. Y'all are all so interesting, and you're so good at what you do. What like, would you say to do after TikTok? Like them to they, do? I think they got to get a YouTube. You got, I mean, like what you have is just like there's so much. You could do a how-to. You could just vlog. You could. So I would say start with YouTube. And the the reason why I probably say start with YouTube is because that's our foundation. Yeah. You know, like that's where everything goes on a schedule. And then we build off of that. Mm-hmm. So it's like, for instance, <coughs> Donnie is working on right now. Um, it's just kind of showing the new intern houses. It's kind of interesting getting a tour. And so it'll be a 14, 16 minute uh, ep- episode of Rodeo Time. Mm-hmm. And then... We'll build maybe a three or four minute Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram yeah. episode, and then there'll be like a ninety second TikTok. Mm-hmm. We'll throw it on um, Instagram. I mean, on swipe ups and uh, Instagram stories and Snapchats. So we we build from YouTube and go up. Yeah. So I think if you can if you can master getting content on YouTube, well, then all of a sudden you got the hard part down, and you just pick the highlights and put them on all the other platforms. Mm-hmm. Because YouTube, like, <coughs> it's, it won't, not everything will get taken down, like, TikTok. Like, every little thing. Will get For me right now, it just seems like TikTok is the only one taking everything down. Yeah. Do you think that'll change? Uh, Well, Lord willing, it changes as in, like, TikTok stops taking stuff down. But I, I doubt TikTok will change. Do you think it'll change, like, more platforms take more stuff down? Well, I think that's what, that's just an argument going on right now. We just got to see how it unfolds. To me, me personally, like, I think there should be, like, less regulation, period. Yeah. You know, it's like, I mean, that's freedom of speech is kind of a, a big deal, you know? Like, someone shouldn't be a bully, mm-hmm. and there shouldn't be, like, terrorists on social media. Like, there's some obvious stuff, but then, like, me being able to say the word fart or not say the word fart is kind of, like... I feel yeah. like they're kind of wasting some energy mm-hmm. on some issues that might not be, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like it's, I don't know. I don't know. So like there's, there's some things I'm glad I'm not in charge of. <laughs> and then there's other things that would be a really easy call to make. Like, okay, stop interfering with just one side of the table, you mm-hmm. know, <laughs> like stop. <laughs> I mean, anyway, but, um, that's beyond my control. Yeah. You know, to an extent. So, and there may come a time when I need to talk about that on uh, a more, <laughs> with a louder voice and I will when the good Lord calls me to. But for now, I just entertain people, make people laugh, you know, control what I can. Don't worry about things I can't. So anyway, that's what my opinion is. It's like, <clears throat> you know, Gary Vee says everyone should be, every company should first be a media company. Mm. Which I believe too, you know. If you if you're not, you know, people got to know. If I'm going to sell you anything, whether it's a goat or a <laughs> t-shirt, first I have to have your attention. Yeah, it's true. I mean anything. I gotta. You got. We got to be how able could you to. Sell me a goat. How? The best goats. Yeah. How could I sell you yeah. a goat? <laughs> well, you might have the best goats, but you might not. Anyway. Um, Do you have the best goats, Joe Bridgman? I don't have goats. I don't oh. want goats. I wouldn't <laughs> sell you goats. I wouldn't be a good goat salesman because I don't yeah. care for goats. Yeah, you don't. See. But I like t-shirts, you know. So T-shirt on a goat. Yeah. <coughs> so that's why I, I like t-shirts. That's why it's easy for me to sell them. 
So, anyways, what about you, Donnie? What about me? Is there anything about what we do that is has was a surprise to you? Um, no. I mean, the 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 warehouse operations was maybe a little bit bigger than I expected it to be yeah. when I got here, but I knew that was going to be pretty much our priority day to day. Um, is there anything that you think we need to be doing? You've got immunity. That we need to be doing? No, yeah. I think we're. I don't know. I think we're pretty like we do things pretty right. I think like just yeah. seeing how. I mean, this company's a lot different than it was when I got here. You know, yeah. like how so? Yeah, oh, it's just the scale is just way different. You know, when I got here, like uh, I. I we I just felt like I was pretty much solely here to work. Like I felt like I was or I mean we got to do cool stuff and like we bucked bulls and stuff, but I just feel like the intern program has definitely evolved. I was kind I was yeah. kind of trial by fire. I feel <laughs> like I feel like a lot of things have changed. Yeah. Like, especially in the intern program since Are you I saying joined. I'm soft? Kind of. But no, <laughs> it's I I don't know. Like, you feel like some of the interns have a, a little better than you did? Not better it's just like, different it's just different like yeah. th- there wasn't near as many of well, us well i think like when, it was just yeah. m- it was just me caitlin and lisa and wes like but wes was doing a lot of stuff outside you know yeah is i think you've started bringing on interns for more specific roles now yeah like, and it's not so much of here's a hodgepodge of everything that i you know that dale needs done or that you know you can help with now it's like oh man i really need i see a need here and i really want to find the right person for that need yeah. and or someone that wants to learn that need mm-hmm. and yeah so now it's a little bit more like there's actually roles involved where there wasn't when donnie and i first kind of got here yeah. we just all kind of used to come with to me with like hey i need someone to do this and you're like okay i'll do it yeah figure it out like, like we'll figure it out yeah, yeah. <laughs> like i'd pack orders in the morning mm-hmm. and then i might put labels on cavender's bags and pull for cavender's then go sit down on my computer and make some videos you know <coughs> it's just i don't know it's a lot more structured i guess now yeah sure yeah i guess it is I haven't thought of that. I haven't thought about that, you know, but it is, that is, I mean, when I see, when you think about any company that's going to have, I think about it a number of employees, you know, if we were going to have 30 employees and if you're going to keep 30 employees busy all day, yeah, they need to have very mm-hmm. specific, the more you have, I feel like the more specific their jobs mm, will be, absolutely. Mm-hmm. you know? Yep. So, and I, I feel like we could still have more. It's just, there's so many things that need to get done that are just hard for me to communicate. Mm-hmm. And it's not that, it's just 100% my fault that I'm not able to better communicate it. Like what, for instance? <sighs> Now's your time to communicate it. <laughs> well, yeah. one, thing that I, one thing that I did, so it's hard to communicate it, but one thing that I was able to get off my plate and onto someone else's plate effectively was like the graphic design mm-hmm. stuff that Caitlin did. So one one part of my job is, you know, new products, new design, yeah. new artwork, new cap styles, new cap fits, new suppliers. And so I've kind of, I, I finally got Caitlin involved and put that on her plate and... um <coughs> But used to, if I was gone for a week, that means all that stuff got, it hit pause. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that was like getting new products out. We might get new stuff twice a year. Whereas now that it's more like she just checks in with me, Mm -hmm. now it can happen four times a year. We can get new products in for, you know, every quarter. And so that was something I finally, and it got to be a big enough job that it was like, hey, you're in charge of this. That's the thing. Like, everything just had to evolve to the point where it was. It needed it, someone like, as because, a point person. Because, yeah. I mean, that's just the thing. Like, it, I think that's, it. Was, it's all natural in right. the development <coughs> of a company. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, and that's, that's what's been really neat about the intern positions mm-hmm. is because. <coughs> you don't have to pay me. Yeah. But you do pay me, which is surprising. So, <laughs> well, so it brings in people where we're able to pay them in the beginning with something other than money. Yeah. So it allows me 
to put the right people in the right position. For instance, Blythe. We didn't technically... <clears throat> not only did we not necessarily need have a position for you when you came on, we also didn't have that position budgeted. Mm. But because you were willing to come on for free, it was we were able to and make an exchange outside of money, a little barter system. Mm. Then now all of a sudden it allowed us to bring you on. You started bringing value, and then you started bringing it in the area where we needed it the most. So it was easy to justify giving her part of the part of the budget. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. now it's like it's like less risky. Mm-hmm. This new guy that's coming on, Todd. So Todd's going to get here the 18th, and um, <clears throat> same thing. He is really hungry to learn about ranching. So we're going to spend some time with him. He's going to work for us. There's mm-hmm. going to be that exchange, that barter system. And then we're going to find out where he'll be able to bring us the most value in the company. And then that'll kind of help depend. That's going to help set how much he gets paid. You right. know? If it's if it's just strictly stuff, if he only wants to do stuff outside, it's going to be harder for us to justify giving him a huge chunk of the media budget. You right. see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Whereas Blythe was meeting this need that was typically cost us a lot of money. And so it's easier to justify her getting paid by the media out of the media budget. Anyway, there's all these factors that I'm starting to realize. There's a, there's a little system. And some people, you know, people fit into the company in different ways. Yeah. You know, um, Noemi. If you think about just the different things that everybody does, Noemi, Megan, Caitlin, Jordan, Kevin, Willie, like everybody's <laughs> got their own unique style. Yeah. And that's just people. That's mm-hmm. people, right. period. That's not anything unusual. And so putting them in the right position. I would say, yeah, the biggest challenge – for growth for me like if if someone had to say like what's something you didn't expect to get to this point for me it's managing people well it's just three three years two years ago two and a half years ago there was there just wasn't as many of us it was a lot easier right. to be for you to be personable with everyone you know yep. like and get that face time you know yeah and that's something else that just comes with growth you know yeah you got to Delegate, I guess. Is that the right yeah. word? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta delegate. I gotta but but what's super important, what I've underestimated, and Gary V would preach it, but I just kinda I wouldn't blow it off, but I didn't I guess understand the depth of why he would bring it up. But culture. Mm-hmm. Culture is really important. And one thing I've noticed, and uh, it's not a bad thing, but you know, like every town somebody you see it a lot in towns, but mm-hmm. people will say something like, Man, it's like I'm going back to high school. That analogy gets used a lot. You haven't heard that? No, yeah, I've heard it. Yeah, I'm yeah. Just, so I'm not sure where you're going with it. Well, I'm just, what I was going to say is like, the reason why is like the things that go on in high school. High school is the spot where it's easiest to see. You watch a movie and they show all the groups of people, mm-hmm. like the jocks, the geeks, the, the, um, all the different little clips. The goth group you know and that in movies they really put a hard line between each one you mm-hmm. know where in real life they're they're all kind of meshed but those you know groups clicks they still exist yeah what one are you in <sighs> i'm in my own mm. i'm in my own You're, there's a in texas in our culture there's also like a rodeo rancher super mm-hmm. puncher group so that's the one i was in by but yourself? um i was by myself oh, okay. with the lunch ladies. in memphis <laughs> yes oh. um <clears throat> with the ag teacher who was oh. my old man um but that that doesn't just exist in high school yeah and people say man, it's, it's, it's like i went back to high school no you're interacting with humans mm-hmm. high school kids you know like adults. if you think about it there's plenty of adults that like have the they still gossip the same as high school right. kids. They still have clicks the same as high school kids. They still, like, everything's the same. You know, they have crushes. They treat their crush. Like, you know, they kind of, like, they'll flirt as, you know, they may not hit like they did in fourth grade, but they're going to, like, <laughs> yeah. they're going to kind of be mean to their crush. They're going to, you know, like, all those little cliches in high school, they exist in college and they exist in adults. They exist in nursing homes. <laughs> There are those same things in nursing homes. It's people, you know, mm-hmm. and that's one thing I've learned. And so managing that because the culture matters in a company, that has been the most challenging thing for me. And, um, you know, people got to get along. People got to, uh, people got to, uh, 
not a, not everyone has to like each other. Like we don't all have to be best friends, you know. But there's got to be a respect level. Mm-hmm. There's got to be a, and it starts at the top, is what I've learned. Mm-hmm. You know, it starts with me. How do I talk to my employees? How do I talk to each other? How do I? Um, <clears throat> so, I think we've done a good job with culture, but it is it is definitely something that you know I've learned can, especially over the last two years, but like a one bad apple. You know what I mean? Can so you just got to be careful. Yeah. But but managing people has been the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. If if we are to gr- if we're gonna if, if, just think about it, if we were gonna double in size, it's gonna revolve around people. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Having the right people in the right places. So <sighs> anyway, enough about one of the things that you said. Um, I think it was like when we were in Dallas at Market. One of those times around that time, you said that um, you shouldn't be in a job where you're looking forward to the weekend. And you were so right. Like, if you're in a job where you're like, oh, I can't wait for this to be, like, done. Like, don't. You're in the wrong career path. You're in the wrong profession. And that was was really eye-opening for me. Because I was like, huh, yeah. That that makes sense. Well, it's. Here, I don't like the weekends. I mean, this isn't. This isn't a communist country. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. like where people are forced to a certain job and they don't have a choice. Like in communist countries, you don't get to decide. Mm-hmm. You know, they tell you. They tell you what time to be there. They tell you what time you got to leave. They tell you, oh, well, looks like I'm now in the military. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that's yeah. not the case here. And um, we're in, we live in the U.S. of A. And we have the internet. And so there's just a lot of things a person can do. And sure, times are a little weird right now, but like there's still opportunity Mm -hmm. and there's still things out there. And sometimes you got to do things that you don't necessarily enjoy doing so you can get to where you want to go. Yeah. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do that, but just when it comes to just your everyday gig, then like, I mean, especially, you know, the three of you at this table, you guys don't have like a family tying you down to a certain area. (laughs) You don't have, I mean, like, and so, like, there's a lot of freedom to go and do. Mm -hmm. Your cost of living is very low. And so, um, and even if you did have a family, like, it it just might mean that, like, it takes you a little more time to transition away from something that you hate into something that you enjoy, you know. So, that's what, that's, that's, that's all I think. I think life is too short to just continuously stay in something that you hate. Yeah. For sure. Well, and I think that, like, I believe this in all of us. Like, I believe you have this God-given gift of a passion. And if you're not (laughs) pouring into that or pouring it into, like, your community and being of service to others, you're just missing out on the whole reason why we're here, Mm -hmm. like, to me. And if you're just doing that 9 to 5 and you, you hate it and it's just, like, completely destroying you from the inside, like, it's time to, like, okay, what are you passionate about? Like, what do you really like to do? And do you have the means to go and do that? And if you do, then like it's no brainer, you know, right. like that's, sh- it's a no brainer to just move on and try to make that work. Yeah. Cause yeah. you'd be doing a service to yourself and in turn doing a service to others by sharing your passion. So I think yeah. you got to remember though, like you're going to have bad days. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. like, so don't let that ever discourage you just because yep. like you have a bad day and doing something you're like, Oh, maybe this isn't something I should do. Like you could, I think Craig said it one time. He's like, you could be put on this planet to be an astronaut. You know, every day you might think like about being an astronaut. You might have, but there's going to be some days you wake up and you're like, I don't, I don't know if I want to be an astronaut anymore. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like, no, that's a, days. that's a hundred percent true. Yeah. No matter what you're doing. And I, <coughs> it's almost like, you know, everybody always talks about like getting to a spot where you don't have to do anything. You know, it's like if you win the lottery. Awful. What would you do if you won the lottery? I wouldn't do anything, you know. But, like, <laughs> my cousin broke. You. Yeah. <laughs> Take a look at my cousin. He broke. Don't do <laughs> You ain't got that million dollars to do nothing, Peter. Um, but <clears throat> God made man and woman to work. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, there's a certain fulfillment. Like, the few times I've been on vacation, like, day three, like, dude, <laughs> get me out of here. Ready to do something. Like, I remember one time I went, and, like, I just did my taxes. I was like, I got to get, yes, it just happened to be on a beach, you know, but I'm like, I'm like going through doing all my taxes, you know, it's like at least, and then I'm like, I'd do my taxes on a beach if I could. Yeah. Right. And that's what I felt (laughs) like. But the point is, it's just like God made us to work. 
if you hate work, you just might hate the thing you're doing. Yeah. You know, but if you like love what you're doing, there's going to, and no matter what, even if you love what you're doing, there's still going to be, like you said, there's still going to be those days that you don't enjoy doing it. So mm-hmm. you got to know the difference. But, um, so yeah, that's what, like Gary V, like I, I look forward to Mondays big time, yeah, big time. And we talked about that on the last podcast was jobs that, that, um, or maybe it was with Tyler Wilhelm, but yeah. jobs we'd had that gave us Perspective. appreciation for what we are doing now. Yeah. So for me, I think I talked about um, whenever I was, yeah, that was with Logan because I talked about being a TA. I always think there's an opportunity, no matter your situation, where you can, I like the term, like grow where you are planted. Like even if it's a job you don't like, there's so much you can learn from it and make the decision in your head to say, okay, I'm only going to be here for another six months. So like what can I put into this six months Mm -hmm. and what can I get out of this six months that will help me be a better person when I leave? And I just think too many people, like Donnie was saying, like it's just a bad day, it sucks. You know, like no, just make the decision of it. Okay, I I don't like it, but I know this is a transitionary phase for me. So what can I learn and what can I give others during this transition time? Mm -hmm. Grass is green where you water it. Yeah. yeah. I thought about that exact thing yesterday with the intern program. Really? It's like you guys come in here. You don't, like, because usually, you know, there's there's times, like, as with any job, or usually it's like church camp, you might not have this, but, like, you got time on your, on your, on your own. Yeah. Like, maybe it's in the morning, maybe it's in the evening. Yeah. And I got to thinking, like, I needed to encourage you guys or I need to have at some point a talk where it's just like I remind you, like, make the most of what you got here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like, maybe it is you're riding a horse in the morning. You know, we go to work. You're getting on Bronx, getting on the spur board in the evening. For Willie, it's getting on the barrel. For you, it might be, you know, you and I, right now you're riding – Boone a little bit mm-hmm. and maybe it's something where we're, we're doing something with business and just kind of having those talks that kind of open your eyes to some things that go on behind the scenes but essentially it's like use this as like a, a, a training time where mm-hmm. you and I'm not saying you never take a break yeah but if you mm-hmm. look back on your time and it's just like for instance you can rope the dummy a lot better than when you got here oh, yeah you know what I'm saying <laughs> so like when you, if you were to leave here, let's say you were to leave here at three years, which would be July. Mm-hmm. Let's say maybe you, you, some opportunity comes up where some NFR Bronc rider needs you to help take care of his practice pen Bronx, you know, and it's just like a no brainer, yeah. you know, and you decide to leave at three, at three years. Well, like, what did you get out of this three years? And if you're able to look back and it's like, you know, it would be a pretty long list of things. Like uh-huh. you, you would be an example of like things that you got out of it. But I wouldn't want it to be for someone that well worked for Dale Brisby and I got to binge watch everything on Netflix. Yeah, you know, I want you to binge watch a few things like my show How to Be a Cowboy plug. <laughs> but I want you to get you know like I got to put a lot of miles on a horse like Nick. Yeah. Nick was only here for two months because he had to go back to school. He got a lot out of his two months. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He didn't get you know he didn't come to find out the internet didn't reach over to the bunkhouse. And so I think what you said, making the most of where you're at and how you've worded it, the water's greenest where you, well, how can I bring value Grass is greenest where you water to where I'm at and how can I get value moving forward? (laughs) Like I want y'all to take advantage of Dale, like not, not literally, but like (laughs) take advantage of your situation. Don't Mm -hmm. take advantage of Dale Brisbane, but like, you know, whether it is riding a horse or, um, you know, working on a craft or anyway, you know, some people here, their, their motivation is to make money and that's it. You know, some people that work here, like the ones that are recruited locally that aren't interns, like, you know, I want them to enjoy it. I think the culture is, the culture here is still important for them, but their, their motivation is they got to pay their bills to support their family and then they go home. Right. And so that's okay too, but you just got to ask yourself, why am I here and how can I maximize and be the most efficient at the opportunity. Mm-hmm. So, but that's anything in life, not just an internship with Dale Brisby. You might be working at a feed store. Another another one is, you know, leveraging opportunities. You can meet, you know, the people that you meet, the people that you, you know. And it may not, it might be virtually. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But just being here would allow you to interact with, for instance, Rock and Roll Denim, mm-hmm. American Hat, Total Feeds, um, Can-Am, 
any of the people that walk through here that you're, you know, maybe a musical artist. If somebody, you know, uh, William Clark Green just came in here yeah, and was looking for somebody to tour with him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's just these little opportunities that come through that, that like the, the Bronx riders you might meet. Yeah. The, yeah, I mean, that, fun. that's a pretty, that's a pretty in your face, like, um, example there. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, a lot of people come in here, like, I don't know if they're like actually wanting to buy a shirt or like here for you. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, a little both. That kid yesterday, he was here. He wanted to buy a cap, but he he wants to be an intern. So no, but I yeah. mean like William Clark Green. Like I was like, or like a person you have come talk on the uh-huh. podcast. Right. I'm like, hey, do you want to buy a shirt? Or like, oh, like you don't know who they are, and then yeah. they're here for. I've got you. Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Jacob's crawling, walks in the door. <laughs> hey, what can I get for you? Uh, oh. Just smalls are on the top, <laughs> larges oh, are in the middle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jacob's. I'll funny. pay you money to do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be what? <laughs> No. <laughs> Not wearing this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Or JB. That would be funny, too. Yeah. 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 And for all of the, those of you wondering, yes, JB is great. He is healthy, and he will be at the NFR. So <laughs> everyone keeps asking me. I think even my banker. I was in there. He's like, how's JB? Like, JB is good, sir. Yeah. But You think you'll pull his bull rope at the NFR? <laughs> they had enough money. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> no, I don't think I'll <laughs> <laughs> No. He'll probably have a, a bronc rider or somebody. Yeah. Yeah. So back rider he'll probably have plenty of people yeah. <laughs> it'd probably be wade i bet it's wade sundale i bet wade sundale pulls his bull rope wade made the nfr didn't he i'm not sure i haven't looked at the standings in the past couple of weeks well let's talk about that because it is there's a lot of guys that aren't going this year that do regular faces dude you ain't kidding yeah especially He's, in the bronc riding that's what i i don't know much about and the bull riding. Neither Jacobs nor Sterling, which is just blows my mind. All right, 2021, we got the all-around. Well, Stetson Wright. He, yeah, uh, he's pretty much got that wrapped yeah. up. Yeah. $320,000. <laughs> he had that wrapped up, like, back in July. <laughs> Second place is one thirty-five. So he's $200,000 in the lead. So oh, when good I for la- him. Yeah, when I last <laughs> looked, he was, like, 140000 and he was winning by, like, hundred grand. And I was like, he's pretty much got one. But R- Right now, he's got the bronc riding wrapped up. We're talking about the bronc riding. Um, we got Stetson at one ninety three. Ryder is at 181. Ryder, in my opinion, just, I don't know. Obviously, if there's anybody that can compete with him, it's Stetson. But just the man is a machine. Year in, year out. Like, right, that's one of the most consistent Bronc riders, I think, alive. He's just, it's, yeah. So then it goes Brody Crest, Dawson Hayes, Zeke Thurston, Leighton Green, Chase Brooks, Colby Wanchuk. One, Wyatt Casper, Ben Anderson, Tegan Smith, Sage Newman, Wade Sundell at number 13, Cody Demos, 14, Spencer Wright, number 15. Oh, dang. I thought Lefty was in there. No, he's at 18. Did he get hurt? Yes. That's right. Yes, mm-hmm. he did. Yes, he did. Isaac Diaz, number 19. Man, it's cool to see just uh, uh, Cody Demos. Yeah. yeah I didn't realize again. he – yeah, I didn't realize he made it back. I want to say his number of NFR appearances might be in the teens. So it doesn't say A lot say of recognizable here. names in there, for does sure. It say here, yeah. I don't think it says. So anyway, yeah, he's a he's a. Wait a second. No. Uh, anyway, whatever. So, on to the next one. What about what the about, bull riding? What about the bull riding? Let's talk about the bull riding standings. Stats and right. Yeah. Bull riding right now, Sage Kimsey oh, is Sage. winning 264. That's Stetson's, a lot of money. Yeah, that's a bunch too. <laughs> yeah. Stetson's at 204. Uh, Clayton Sellers, number three. Creek Young, number four. Josh Frost, J is number five. JB Mooney, number six. That's with missing a lot. I was about yeah. to say. Yeah. Getting started late uh, and then not mm-hmm. finishing. Winning uh, Reno was big time for him. That really set him up. Dustin Bouquet, fellow He's DB. He's injured, ain't he? 
Dustin. Dustin, is he? I'm not sure, but he's number seven. Parker Bredding, number eight. Kai Hamilton, number nine. Trey Benton. Trey Benton is number 10. Uh, Braden Richardson. Golly, that is awesome. I did not know that he was making the NFR. Golly, I remember him getting started. That was neat. Sorry, that just, that just oh, yeah. caught me Flashbacks. off guard. <laughs> Ruger, Ruger uh, Piva, number 12. Shane Proctor, number 13. Boudreaux Campbell, 14. Roscoe Jarbo, number 15. Shane been in the NFR? Yes. Yeah. He's a world champ. Oh. I, oh, I did not know. Yeah, that. yeah. I, Shane's a Shane's. He's been in the NFR. I don't think he's been in the Bronc ride. Has he been in the Bronc ride? But yeah, he's been in the NFR a couple of times. He went to the NFR and the PBR World Finals. I was going to say I, I thought like, he I was remember. one year PBR. He guy. he is, but he went to both one year. I did not know that. Yeah, he's one of the few that's been to both in the same year. Glad to see Clayton Sellers come on. Like, dude, I, I want to see he that. He rides. So he came on correct. strong this year. Mm-hmm. Like so super correct. strong. Yeah, I knew. Like as soon as I like got to watch him, I was like, dude, you gotta wear a rodeo time patch. Yeah. Because he's just I just I'm a fan. That's who when I put a patch on somebody, it's because I'm a fan. Yeah. But um he he's so correct. Yeah. Like he rides with so much form and to me, that's the kind of guy that's gonna be, you know, consistent, consistent yeah. and have some longevity. Yeah. You he's know. a positive dude too, or at least he has been when I've been around him. Like he's just Yeah. Great guy to be around. Dayton Lefty's sister now? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that true? Yeah. Last but not least, the bareback riding. Tilden Hooper coming in as your number one. Come on. Dude, we got some I mean, Shane Proctor in the bull riding. Cody Demos in the Bronc riding. Tilden. Tilden Hooper. Tilden. Uh, He's 34, age, 35. No, th- he might be 30. Hey. <sighs> I, don't know. I don't know how old he is. Is Casey older? Uh, I'm not sure. Casey, uh, so Tilden, Tim O'Connell, Clayton Bigelow, Caleb Bennett, Casey Field. The first real young guy is sixth, and that's mm-hmm. Jess Pope. Mm-hmm. These other guys are kind of like some... Well, Some guys have been around. Veterans, a bit. yeah, for yeah. sure. Big low, he might be twenty six, twenty seven, but they, you know, been to the NFL. Yeah, a few yeah, he's a but world, they're all he's recognizable names too, in yeah. the, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. Big Low's, a, he's a world champ. But that's what I'm saying. Like they've been around. Yeah, top five guys. Tim's a world champ. Mm-hmm. Clayton's a world champ. I don't think Big Low is. I mean, uh, uh, Bennett is. Then Casey Field, Jess Pope, number seven, Tilden Richie hasn't, Champion. Tid- no. Tilden hasn't won, right? Uh, no, yeah. He's, yeah, yeah. Tilden's not won the world yet. That's what I thought. Anyway, what number is Richie? Seven. Baller. Richie. Cole Baller. Reiner. Number eight. Oren Larson. Guy, huh? Number nine. Richie. Richie. Cole. Oh, I'll yeah. Um, Oren Larson, he's been around a little bit. Such a nice guy. Oren Larson is so nice. Um, Garrett Shadbolt, I'm not familiar with him. He's from Nebraska. Hey. Merriman, do you know where Merriman is? No idea. Yeah, <laughs> me neither. Tanner Oss, he's been around for a little while. Mm-hmm. Cole Franks. From Clarendon, Texas. I imagine he's just going to school there. R.C. Landingham, Hat Creek, uh, California. And then Taylor Broussard, he's been around a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then number 15, Zach Hibbler. That is Nito Burrito. Man, speaking of Cody D, like that that time frame, like number 18th is Will Lowe. Oh, man. That joker just keeps spurring him, man. Yeah. The low rider. He just keeps going. He's like the dang Energizer Bunny for bareback <laughs> riders. I got the, it's almost like he's going to beat, beat Bruce Ford. He's an old school guy. He went to the NFL when he was like 45 in the bareback riding. I know we're missing a couple of names, but this that. is an exciting NFR. It is. You know? Yeah. Like, I'm actually pretty excited about this little lineup we got. There's I'm, some new guys in here that are like, mm-hmm. the hell you are missing some names. Yeah. My ass is in yeah. there. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's yeah. some new guys that are like, it's mm-hmm. my turn. But yeah, there. I know what you mean. There's some names where we feel like. Well, that's what I mean. Just, like some exciting. Hard, like it is hard to hear the list of Bronc riders and not hear Jacobs Crowley's name right. in there. Ten years in a row, Rusty didn't make it either. Dang, yeah. Rusty and Jacobs and Sterling. And Sterling. Those are mm-hmm. Bill Tudor's number twenty-five. I think he got hurt. They all got some pretty good excuses, though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you think that's a that's an a that's a freaking elite. Number 
to get to. Yeah. So mm-hmm. anybody that doesn't has got some sort of. <sighs> but bareback riding in general, man, like there's some money to be won out there. There's some. If you are out there, and now you gotta you gotta be a certain kind of person, you know. Uh, well, to hack it in any rough stock event. Yeah, but bareback riding especially. Golly, <laughs> that is a you gotta you are set apart to be. I, I'm gonna go to the the tie down roping only because I know a few of them. But oh, Shane Hanchi yeah, is winning the world one in, mm-hmm. by forty plus thousand dollars. Weston Hughes, Shad Mayfield, Caleb Schmidt. Sold him a horse once. Tough Cooper, Marcus Costa, Ty Harris, Justin Smith, Marty Yates, Corey Solomon. Nice. Nice. Number 10. Haven Medjid. Is that how you say his last name? I met him once. Don't Medgid? tell him. Medjid. Medjid. M E G D. Yeah. Ryan, Ryan Jarrett, Hunter Heron, Taylor Santos, and John Doach. Anyway, that's neat. Anyway. So, there you have it, folks. I wonder who is going to get bullfighter. I know I saw Nathan Hart made the short list. I'm sure uh, Tuck and Webb made the mm-hmm. short list. Nate, Justice. Mm-hmm. I wonder who number five was. Do you all know? Mm-mm. I don't. I just saw those three or four names. Who? I'm not even going to pretend like I have any idea because yeah. I have no idea. NFR. Heck if I remember. Bullfighter. Short list. 2021. Uh, uh. And we're getting close. We're like six. six we're weeks. like five and a half weeks. Huh. No, next Monday is six weeks. Okay, so we're like six and a half weeks. <laughs> six weeks and six days. <laughs> seven weeks. Pretty much seven weeks. Rounded but up. I'm excited. It's Wait. gonna. We're gonna sneeze, and it's gonna be here. Yeah, but I got a. We got a lot of exciting stuff in between. For yeah, sure. Like what? Going to California. That's Ooh. gonna be a pretty big deal. Mm-hmm. What are you gonna be doing in California, Donnie? Uh, just looking at all the pretty horses. <laughs> um, going to the Veter Bronx School. Dude, that's a bad a. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool deal, and then. WRCA is a pretty cool. I like that yeah, one. That's fun. That's a fun place. Place. Well, they didn't have it last year. Did they? Did they have it last year? Yeah. I yeah, I, I went. went. Yeah, it was in a different we were in a different building. Uh I don't think I went. Uh Cheech and KK. Or was it just KK? It was me and KK and Cheech drove there and back. Yeah, so Cheech drove it for me. I got you. And then so KK went. That's and right. And, you, and then down, me and you went, and then we brought it brought back. Brought it back. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of an unusual. But, yeah, we're going this year. Man, bullfighters. Where are the bullfighters? Mm. I really want to figure out who's on the short list. But, anyway, it's got to be one of them guys, one of the top guys. But <coughs> year in, year out. Do what? Nothing. I was quoting a movie. A movie. Eight seconds. We're also going to, while well, you're going to your deal in California, we're going to the National High School Fund, uh, National FFA Convention. FFA. FFA. Yeah, that'll be good. That'll be exciting. I tried out to be an officer of FFA in my high school and didn't get it. For chapter office? Yes. Man. I know. You must have had a competitive. Yeah, they said I was too involved already. What? Yeah, what? and other things. I couldn't give all my full attention oh, to yeah. FFA. I thought they meant you were too involved in FFA. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. But I, I was involved in FFA. Well, okay. that was that was like a, that was a pretty, I don't know, a lot of good for me has come out of that organization. Another just hidden secret, best kept secret of why you're in school. Me? No, just anybody. Oh. FFA. Just the stuff that can come of that. Yeah. My sister got all of her college paid for through FFA. What? Just different scholarships she won. Was she? Nerd. Nerd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. She was not She was not dumb. Don't tell her I said that. Yeah. <laughs> High achiever. She is She is very smart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was no. she a state officer? No. I, I was a state officer. But, yeah, I had <laughs> I a fraction. A well, really? I'm say, <laughs> I say that to say that, like, she was just involved and did well. 
being a state officer doesn't necessarily mean you get scholarships because I was a state officer and I had like a fraction of the scholarship she had. What? I got way more scholarships in rodeo than I did through FFA because I just didn't apply myself as much as she did in FFA. Did but you do creed speaking ever? No. I did. She, she did, I think. She did? <coughs> yeah. She could probably tell you the creed right now. But um, I did extemporaneous speaking. What's, oh, really that's like that. A, you draw a bunch of different topics out of a out of a bowl uh-huh. you you draw three and then you pick one and they give you 30 minutes to prep and then you give a speech on it i really enjoyed that that's cool yeah it was kind of neat huh. just kind of a just if you can bs yeah kind of stuff and yeah and could. then you had to give speeches obviously when you ran for offices mm-hmm. but yeah no i i do not think that i was a big and i'm a big deal I because know. i was state officer <laughs> it's actually the opposite like it's kind of silly like i think I got to talk to some state officers. I, yeah, sometimes some sometimes state officers think they're like a big deal, and they're just not. Yeah, but they're not a temporary speaker. Anyway, <sighs> but yeah, FFA and commercial steers—that's what you need to do. <laughs> and basketball. Mm. I, should, I wish I'd have played basketball. I'm glad I played I football. Thought you played when basketball. You stop? I did like half a half a season my senior year because some guys quit and coach needed somebody to help ride the bench but that's all i did but i i love basketball my explore page mm-hmm. is rodeo stuff and basketball highlights like, i love like basketball NBA? the yeah any of it well more nba because it's easier to keep up with players i played oh, yeah. basketball in middle school mm-hmm. and then my okay. senior year i got in some legal trouble and, what uh, yeah we haven't heard about Along that with your hello addiction? podcast oh i'm sure you got I'm legal you. trouble i got a minor in possession Oh, at school. <laughs> Should I get <laughs> that out of okay. Yeah. No, it, don't cut this out, Bly. It no. was it was homecoming week, and so every night of homecoming week, the seniors have a party somewhere, and um, I had gotten dropped off at my house the night before, and for some reason, like, like I had some beverages with me, and st- instead of carrying them. Inside my house, like, I just opened up my passenger door to my truck and just threw them in there on the floorboard. I think there was, like, three. And the next day, they uh, had drug dogs at school, and they were just, like, going and looking in windows of our vehicles in the school parking lot. and Kind of got you. Yeah. Oh, you're wild. So you didn't That's get crazy. to play sports? Uh, they I got kicked off the football team. What? Yeah, for that. I missed three games my senior year. It was pretty heartbreaking for me. Wow. Yeah. That was, oh, we have not talked about this. That was that was pretty heartbreaking for me. I'm I would have lie. remembered that. Um, Did anybody else, like, they find a gun or something? I or had two fight? shotguns in the backseat of my truck, mm-hmm. too. Yeah. That was more, honestly, I was more worried about that at the time, but they didn't really care. about. They didn't. That was right at that period of time before things yeah. got real, real mm-hmm. serious. Before it was and, super strict. Yeah, and, I mean, like, I, <clears throat> like, they were shotguns, you know. I was like, I was, I hunted a lot, mm-hmm. right? And they were just in there, but uh, so I got, the judge threw the book at me. He did not like my dad, I guess, and he was on his way out. He was about re- ready to retire. He gave me two years supervised probation, and I lost my license for thirty days. I wasn't even drinking, <laughs> like I wasn't mm-hmm. even yeah drunk or dry, uh, operating a vehicle. Like really, I didn't even have the alcohol with me. It was in my vehicle. Anyways, dang. Where was I going? With? Oh, so I got supervised probation, and I had to do community service. So then, the basketball coach came to me, and I don't need a judge to tell me to care about my community. <laughs> 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 but you do, right? <laughs> um, but anyways, the basketball coach was actually like his twin brother was married to my aunt, so um, he came to me, and um, I did my community service helping the basketball team. So that was pretty cool. I got to go places with them. I felt like I was part of the team. Were you that like a student manager? Kind of, I guess. But like, but you didn't get to play? No, I didn't want to play. Like, I wouldn't have played if I wouldn't have gotten in trouble. Yeah. I I played. I was on the baseball team. I wouldn't say I played, but gotcha. I liked being on. All my best friends played baseball, and they were really good. And I, I just enjoyed going places and doing stuff to stay in shape for football season. Position. Baseball, that was pretty much why. Baseball f- was fun. Yeah, I like, loved I just, being on the baseball I, I team. I didn't, like, I didn't, 
I didn't have a pat like no desire Mm-mm. to play college ball. No, no desire. Not that I was even. Yeah, I mean, I was probably, probably good enough. I probably could. I could have played anything. I in college. wasn't, but I was center <laughs> field, uh, and I lo- like I was. I had a. I was pretty efficient at my in my, for my team for our district. Like I mean, I could I could go catch a ball, but um, but just practice was fun. Yeah, you know, it's just like you hit a ball, you throw it around, especially outfield. BP was awesome. <clears throat> our coach was like this massive man. Coach Yarbrough, stacked, like big man. And so he was in charge of, the, you know, the infield. And so they line up, and he would just hit dingers, mm-hmm. you know. Like he would just send them, like line drive, ground ball. And so, like, if you were shortstop, second base, like those – practice for you kind of sucked because yeah. Coach was like this mammoth of a man that was unrealistic. Didn't I mean, it made you ready for you. the game. Yeah. But, like, outfield, like our coach there, he would just hit us fly balls. Like he'd just go – I mean, it was fun. Yeah. Then go to bat and practice. We didn't run a lot, you know? And, uh, yeah. Loved it. I loved it. Got to wear cool stuff. Like, I loved being on the baseball team. Baseball pants? Batting practice, like, days where we would just take batting practice, those were the best. You know, you're just just pretty much hanging out with your friends. Exactly. Like, yeah. That's that's how I saw it. (coughs) It's like duck hunting. Yeah. Baseball is the duck hunting of sports. (laughs) If, but. We were pretty good, too. Like I was lucky. <laughs> like we we were just good. The, my buddies, they were they were freaking good. A couple of them went on to play college ball. Yeah, I don't know. Well, yeah, I wish I'd have played basketball just because like I could still. I mean, like you're you're not gonna go play baseball unless you join like a softball league. But like you could get there could be four of you and you could go. Yeah. You know, shoot some hoops or whatever. Yeah. I'm just not a fan. I just. But I don't have an intense desire to play, so it wouldn't have been that big a deal. I just really enjoy watching it. I'm a, I am appreciate the athleticism. I guess I played enough basketball to appreciate someone that can do it well. Yeah. And so, like, when, like, Lisa's son is around, who plays college ball in Dallas somewhere, I'm just like, dude, you can start talking, and I'm just like, all ears. <laughs> you can just explain to me a play, and I'm, and I'm entertained. So, <clears throat> anyways. Did you play sports, Blythe? Yeah, I played indoor soccer and outdoor soccer, and then I also. You went to a big school, didn't you? Cheered. Y'all have indoor soccer. No, it was like it was like a a club team. Oh, like a club but team. But with the gotcha. school, I played outdoor soccer. But I got you. Yeah, it was fun. I uh. A lot of running in soccer. Oh yeah, and girls are mean. Like they'll pull your hair. Yeah. And like, cause like indoor soccer, you can't get away with as much because the like ref refs are pretty close to you, and you can see, but. And that field is smaller. But then outdoors, like, girls yeah. will get you. <laughs> Everything goes. I yeah. Did, I dated a D1 soccer player. She used to pull my hair. Oh, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> She's mean. <laughs> yes. What sports did you play? Basketball. Basketball. Could you dunk? No. No? I had one job, and that was to make every shot I shot. Ooh. Like, I was a three. So, oh yeah, because I was five six white girl. Like, I was kind of fast, but not super fast. My coach was like, "If you want to be on varsity, like, anytime the ball touches your hands, like, it better be two or three points." And so I made it my goal. Hey, and so it was. <laughs> yeah. So awesome. you made a lot of threes. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yep. Still got it. Went to the gym like I don't know, probably a couple of weeks ago with Nick, and they had like this. And I'm sinking them. Sinking them. <laughs> sinking them. I still got swish, it. Swish, swish. Making it rain. Their still jaws got it. just dropped. Same. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah. No, I, I just spent like one summer. My coach was like, he had this 10,000 shot program, and he was like, you know, no one's been able to go through it the whole time. You had to make 10,000, not just like shoot wow. 10,000. You had to make 10,000. Mm-hmm. And so one summer, I think it was going to my junior year, and like, there was kind of some competitive spots on the team for, because girls basketball and love ladies, a big deal. Like it's a huge deal. And so I was like, okay, if I want a spot, my dad was like, do the program. Like, and he was like, and so I stayed at before practice and after practice the whole summer. Wow. And like made 10,000 shots. That's cool. And so, yeah, that's pretty, cool. It was pretty cool. It's awesome. If there was something like that for football in high school, I would have done it. Anything mm-hmm. extra like that. So yeah. I would, I would have done yeah. anything to be yeah. on like, to earn that's, my spot. That's where I was. Yeah. I was not. I mean, I I, I I get earning your spot, but I didn't <laughs> do anything to better myself. I don't really regret that big time. We didn't have to earn our spots. Our school was small enough, but, like, yeah, I, I was just – I was so in love with it. Mm-hmm. So in love with it. But mm-hmm. – um, 
I cheered for basketball and football <laughs> as a cheerleader. I said that last because <laughs> cheerleaders get a bad rap. For shame. Yeah. I danced Just too <laughs> on a table and got stitches at camp once. Yeah. Yep. Don't dance on tables. Elevated surfaces. Yep. Did we lose camera one? No, I, I keep hearing beeping. I don't know where it's coming from. They're, they're all on. Gotcha. Well, we usually give life advice, Blythe. What do you got for us? Oh, man. Um, Besides don't dance on tables. Yeah, don't dance on tables. Yeah. And then my, my crush's uh, best friend's dad stitched me up. Mm. I was crying like a baby. Yeah. Yep. Good times. Don't, oh, so well. don't dance on tables. Yeah. Yeah. No. Don't dance well, on tables. Well, my life advice is when life hands you lemons, put a bull rope on them. And what that means is just how you approach every day. Because when you're riding bulls, it's 90% mental and the rest is in your head. You got fundamentals that you got to adhere to. And when you can put your emotions to the side and execute the fundamentals, then you make good bull rides. And you don't have to be a (coughs) mammoth of a man that can pick up the bull. You know, it's all about being in the right place at the right time. As it is with time. I mean, with life. So, life and your lemons. Put a bull rope on them. Mine is going to be... Always be honest with yourself and others because the truth is expansive. Expensive? Expansive. Oh. Broadens. And bad news doesn't get better with time. No. Mm-mm. Yeah. So. Donnie? Early and often. That's when you communicate. Yep. What you got, Donnie? Uh, the grass is greener where you water it. Mm. Mm. Take a page out of the book that's already been written. Mm. I like it. <laughs> Thank you for joining us in this episode of Rodeo Time, the podcast. Text me either the word intern, if you want to hear how to be an intern, or text me the word podcast, if you'd like to hear when we're putting in these podcasts. That phone number is 940-353-0890. Also, please check out dalebrisby.com where we've got new caps that I'm wearing, new long sleeve tees, and um, all things to cover your body. So... This has been Donnie Ray Daytona, Caitlin Coward, Blythe Eep, last but not least, Dale Brisby. Pow, pow. Are we off? I haven't turned it off. <laughs> <laughs> the music stopped. Yeah, it was over. The music was over. Oh, oh. Uh, so there's like a climactic point that I need to end it at? <laughs> well, you matched up pretty good. Yeah, you did pretty good. Like, okay. I, we'll play it again because I'm still talking. So, thank you again for joining <laughs> us. We're on to the next one. I'm Dale Brisby and Pal Pal. It's better. <laughs> Click here. If you want to watch this video or watch that video?